One of my favorite Easter stories is about a professor in Germany and he was anxiously seeking a quiet place where he wouldn't be disturbed and he thought he found the perfect location in a little neighborhood where there was only a convent and the silence of the day was only broken by the ringing of the bell except that he noticed when the sisters had recreation that there was a lot of exciting excited talking and this puzzled him he thought these women live in poverty they're unmarried what can they possibly have to be excited about so this perplexed him more and more so he finally went to the convent one day and was ushered in to see the mother superior so he asked the mother superior what this joy was about and she explained we're the bride of Christ so we have to celebrate his life among us and he said Reverend Mother I hope you realize that he died 2,000 years ago and she replied ah professor but on the third day he arose again and we must celebrate and communicate the joy of his resurrection the Holy Land makes all of us just a bit confused yesterday we celebrated Christmas today the calendar tells us that it's Thanksgiving <laughs> but we have just heard the prayers and readings for Easter Sunday it all makes sense why do we give thanks there are many reasons for many people fundamental to our experience as Americans is to look back on the pilgrims and their gratitude for the first harvest and evidence of survival in a new land the relatively here it doesn't seem very long but the relatively long history of our nation offers hope and reasons for gratitude however as Catholics we share a fundamental reason to give thanks Jesus Christ was born suffered and died for us he was open to emptying himself for our salvation even though he knew about our choice one of the fundamental reasons for that change in the consecration prayer of the chalice to many is a reminder of that choice there is not has never been and never will be anyone for whom the passion death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is not sufficient for salvation but the choice to accept this gift is left to each individual still he accomplished the father's will and was victorious over sin and death and this joyful message is forcefully proclaimed by the church despite divisions and scandals if we look at the condition of this basilica it is somewhat frightening even its inability to be repaired still the church proclaims the truth and embraces new members there's a great story told about Napoleon and Cardinal Consalvi Napoleon was said I'll destroy the church and Consalvi looked at him and laughed and he said we've been trying for 1800 years and haven't succeeded what makes you think Emperor that you can do it and of course Napoleon is buried in Les Invalides and we're still here to celebrate the mystery of the resurrection indeed the tomb is still empty because the Lord is risen and that motivates our faith renewed last Sunday with the solemn credo and renewed at the Jordan as we renewed our baptismal promises renewed in our priestly commitment or in marriage vows it's renewed even in our future 
We have celebrated some, or remembered, some priestly anniversaries. The young who continue the mission of the church. We have renewed our fidelity for each one of us on our pilgrim way. As Pope Paul VI wrote in his encyclical Gaudete in Domino, no one is excluded from the joy brought by the Lord. Peter was no great example, and yet he was transformed by the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and he went out and preached, as we have heard, a politically incorrect message. He accused and gave evidence of the fundamental truth of our faith. Certainly my role as chief shepherd for the military services, yet I have my shortcomings. I may not always give the best example or the quickest response. Perhaps our priests are not all the curé d'art, but they are there and pledged to be alter Christus to all who knock at their doors. Perhaps you too do not always see in yourselves the perfect expression of those reborn in Christ. However, we all know that His grace is sufficient. We have all been renewed by this nearness to the footsteps of the Lord. As Pope Francis wrote in his brand new synodal exhortation, let us not flee from the resurrection of Jesus. Let us never give up, come what will. May nothing inspire more than his life which impels us onward. I prayed at the Western Wall yesterday, overwhelmed with the idea that Jesus also prayed in that structure and saw that wall, albeit a part of the whole. That was consoling and an encouraging thought and an opportunity to reach out and experience his proximity. How much more here, where he suffered and died. The message of the resurrection, first experienced over there, spread by word of mouth, verified by a renewal of life so also will it be in our days if we draw from the grace of his presence and make all new. Again, quoting Pope Francis, no one can strip us of the dignity bestowed upon us by this boundless and unfailing love. It is in that confidence that we celebrate this afternoon and that we conclude our pilgrimage of faith. I certainly give my thanks for all of those who have come along with us and for all of the prayers that we have sent up to heaven for those who have asked us to pray for them. The nuns in that convent in Germany knew that the Lord lives but the professor had to discover it. You and I are all called to be instruments of that discovery. Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis unceli et terra, gloria tua. font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. The body of Christ. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.